Today we are talking about The Sims 4 Life and Death and why I think it could actually be a good Sims 4 pack. Firstly, I just want to say usually EA are quite hit or miss with Sims 4 packs. I feel like they're either really good or absolutely horrendous and there's rarely ever an in-between. But one thing I have noticed is that they usually do the Supernatural packs very, very well. The latest Supernatural pack we received was Werewolves and that's not only only the best occult pack. It's also one of the most in-depth game packs. And before that, we obviously had the Sims 4 paranormal stuff, which again, even if you're not into supernatural stuff, you can't deny it's a really, really good pack. There's a lot in there. It's the biggest Sims 4 stuff pack, quite literally. But what I think makes life and death really interesting is that it's like one of those supernatural packs, but it also contains a lot of gameplay for those who are not into supernatural stuff. For example, it's been suggested that it's coming with a bucket list system where they haven't really explained it in that much detail, but it looks like it's something that you're supposed to do before you die. And then if you complete it before you die, you get some kind of bonus from it. And I also think it's maybe a good way to add some more gameplay for elders. There doesn't seem to be much elder specific gameplay within this pack, which is a shame, but it looks like maybe it's something that you you could do with your elder sims which would be good. They've also obviously included a will system in this so that you can pass on your inheritance. I'm really hoping the will system is not just money and I'm hoping that it does also include things like objects because that way you could pass down certain things to certain people. Also I think it's a bit of an issue that you can't have separate bank accounts yet within the same household which I feel like may cause issues with the will system. So I'm really praying that that comes as a base game update. I personally feel like it's long overdue. I feel the same way about having graveyards in the game. Graveyards are kind of been a staple in The Sims, yet we haven't had them in The Sims 4 yet. 10 years on is maybe a little bit too late, especially considering they were a base game feature in The Sims 3. At least we're getting them in The Sims 4 now. I think it will be nice to have a place to put all of your dead Sims in, other than than just like putting an urn in the actual house because I don't know about you guys but I personally find it really annoying when I have an urn in my house and the ghosts keep propping up and at night time like they break all the objects it's really annoying so I think it will be good to have a graveyard lot where we can shove them all into so we don't have to deal with them and of course there will be a funeral system which I personally am the most skeptical about about everything just because EA don't have a good track record with making Sims 4 events work properly. In fact, I can't think of what, literally one, not one singular Sims 4 event which has ever been bug free for me. It's probably going to be underwhelming, but at the very least, these are all core things that I think will be enjoyed by the more like vanilla players who prefer more realistic gameplay because this is maybe the more realistic side of death without it being a little bit too serious. And then for those of you who do like Sims, supernatural gameplay. Of course, this pack comes with a ton of supernatural stuff centered around ghosts, which I just think is really amazing. I've also been asking for a while now for a live career, and I think the Grim Reaper career that's coming to the game is going to be a really great step forward in bringing more live careers into the game. I think live careers can be really, really fun, and I'm excited to see what they do with it in the end product. So obviously, we've only seen the main overview release trailer, there will be another gameplay trailer and then after the gameplay trailer there will also likely be a live stream well it's a pre-recorded live stream so it's not really live where they go over some of the features in a lot more detail and it's in this live stream where you can usually tell if the pack is going to be good or if it's going to be trash I'm really hoping this one is good because just looking at it from face value for now this expansion pack genuinely feels like it could be an expansion pack's worth of content for the first time in a very long time. More recent Sims 4 expansion packs for me have not expanded on the game enough and most certainly feel like game packs. Based on what we've seen so far, it genuinely looks like this could be the first expansion pack in years that may actually feel like an expansion pack. It definitely looks like they put a little bit more passion and energy into this one. They always do with the supernatural stuff. 
Also, I think it might bring back some Sims chaos that we've all been missing, as long as it's not buggy. With Lovestruck and For Rent, for example, those packs definitely brought back a lot of chaos, but a lot of glitchiness came with that chaos. I don't feel like they have to be hand in hand. I feel like you can have chaos without it being glitchy. When I say chaos, I'm also including naughtiness in that definition. With Life and Death, it does seem like it can be very chaotic, and there is also an upcoming feature where you can actually woohoo with ghosts in any objects because you know ghosts can basically like possess any object in game. There will be a feature where you'll be able to woohoo within literally any object in the game which I think is just so hilarious. There are some features that I may be not looking forward to that much for example they did show off that you could have a pet crow. Honestly I was hoping it could be more than just a crow that you could actually get other kinds of birds other than just a crow because I think that would have been really really cool to have different kinds of pets in the game. Simply just having a crow I think is a little bit gothic because obviously you can own a bird as a pet and it not be a crow so maybe a modder will come in and make it so that you can have like another mesh that's not a crow like a parrot or something. I'm also not keen on the brand new like death system where if somebody dies you know in the base game you're sim gets like an annoying sad mootlet and like even if it's a total stranger that's died randomly in the street your sim even in, even though they don't know them they will still get this sad mootlet for like days and it's just like so overpowered they've now introduced a brand new grief system on top of that where different sims will grieve in one of four ways i don't know if i can be bothered for my sims to go through different stages of grief it's one of those like pop psychology things like horoscopes like everybody thinks it's a thing but it's not actually a thing in real life let alone in the sims i just don't know if i could be bothered especially with the rate that sims die so i'm skeptical about that along with the crows along with the events but in general the majority of it looks absolutely cracking the pack is releasing on october the 31st i'm really hoping that they haven't rushed the release of this pack you know like with my wedding stories which was very clearly so rushed they 100 percent rushed the release of that in order to release it before Valentine's Day. If they waited till after Valentine's Day, the pack probably would have been a lot better on launch. So I'm really hoping that with life and death, they are not rushing it in order to make their Halloween deadline. I'm really hoping that they've already like made the pack in advance. I mean, at this stage, it's being released in less than 30 days. The pack should basically be like fully complete with absolutely nothing wrong with it. It should be in an impeccable state at this stage. I hope they would delay it, which obviously they wouldn't but that's another concern because it's one of those like seasonal deadlines where it's like it has to be out by Halloween but then if it's not ready like it's just gonna completely flop and be horrendous. I've learned across the years to always be very skeptical about any Sims 4 pack even though it looks amazing because I thought Love Struck would be absolutely amazing for me. It's like 100% like it's sexual, it's like messy, chaotic and it just turned out to be awful. So now I've learned not to get my hopes up so I'm not getting them up too much about life and death and I'm not saying like rush to pre-order it because you still get the pre-order bonus for this pack even up until December the 12th. You've literally got like a whole month and a half by the time this pack is released to decide whether or not you want it so I'm not saying rush to pre-order it at all in fact I don't recommend that I recommend waiting until my review first but based on what we've seen I honestly think this is actually an expansion pack not a game pack or stuff pack disguised as an expansion pack. This looks like it could genuinely be a Sims 4 expansion packs worth of content. Definitely not a Sims 3's expansion packs worth of content. In fact, in The Sims 3, we had the Supernatural expansion pack, which included vampires, werewolves, fairies, basically the life and death pack, plus many more things. So it's certainly not a value for money Sims pack because we've always got The Sims 3 to compare to. But in terms of Sims 4 stuff, standards. I feel like it's a very good Sims 4 expansion pack from face value. I'm also really hoping that we get a good base game update with this expansion pack because obviously with every EP they give us a brand new Sims 4 base game update. Sometimes they're really big ones, for example the infants update that came with the growing together pack. Other times they're extremely small such as the ceilings update with horse ranch which ended
ended up just glitching and now they've abandoned it. So I'm really hoping that the update that comes with Life and Death will be a substantial one, not just a minor build update, because it's kind of a given that they have to do a base game update with every expansion pack now. They've just made it a tradition for themselves. And there's definitely a lot they could do with a base game update coming with a pack like this. In my dream world, we would probably get an update to have at least five personality traits now because three is 100% not enough. Technically, you can have more with growing together, but you don't really have much control over those traits. I'm also excited to see what this brand new like deathly world is. I'm assuming it's like a secret world because we haven't had one of those for ages. And usually we used to have them in a few expansion packs, not a secret world. I mean, or just like a secret lot or like a secret neighborhood area. We haven't had them recently at all. Yeah, it seems like with this kind of like sparkly pond thing, the sparkly lake and the suggestions that we've seen, it looks like you may be able to access it. I'm assuming through the magical portal. Again, which just kind of makes it feel like maybe it's more of an expansion pack this time round. I really hope EA continue on with this trend of actually trying harder to make expansions feel like expansions. I know I have a lot of negative opinions on my channel, but this is genuinely because they just do a shite job a lot of the time, no offense, but this feels like they're actually stepping it up a bit. And I'm really hoping this trend continues in the future so that EPs actually feel like EPs now. EA have been doing a lot over the past few years, which kind of feels like they're trying to turn their own player base <laughs> against them, despite literally all of the outcries and the rage for years from Simmers Online. Like they've literally blatantly ignored it for years and it's starting to bite them in the ass. But if they continue to make packs which actually look like they could be really good, like life and death, potentially they could turn those negative opinions around. I'm just feeling quite positive in general though about this expansion pack and I wanted to share that because <laughs> usually I'm not. It just feels like they're actually trying this time round and it, it's just so great that they're actually trying. I honestly just haven't enjoyed any Sims 4 pack release like for ages and it, it just looks like I can finally now enjoy something and who knows like I might just completely change my opinions about the Sims 4 now. Maybe I could be a positive channel. What's the like polar opposite of rage bait? I don't know. Positivity bait. This is going to become a positivity sandwich channel now. Although with a positivity sandwich there is always a negative in the middle and that negative is the project Renee rumors and leaks which are literally diabolical. There's been brand new leaks which a lot of you guys haven't seen my video on it yet so I definitely recommend checking that one out because there's some huge information about battle passes, microtransactions, all sorts of terrible things. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next one.